Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. For five full years through his campaign for president into his term in the White House, Donald Trump said often that he wanted American troops to leave Afghanistan. Finally, in his last months in office, Trump seemed ready to act on this. He told aides he was going to pull the troops out. Then, on June 26th of last year, the New York Times stopped him from doing that. The Times ran a story saying that the American intel community had, quote, concluded that a Russian military intelligence unit secretly offered bounties to Taliban-linked militants for killing coalition forces in Afghanistan. Vladimir Putin was murdering American soldiers. Obviously, there was no leaving Afghanistan now. Anyone who suggested leaving Afghanistan would be bowing to Vladimir Putin. As a matter of principle, American troops had to stay in Afghanistan, and they did stay. They're still there today. Official Washington went berserk over the New York Times story. Though the piece contained no actual facts, CNN's senior intelligence correspondent declared it richly reported, a rich tapestry of reporting. And the rest of the media fervently agreed with this. The Times story was, quote, independently confirmed by many other outlets, though no one explained precisely how it was independently confirmed. But they didn't need to because it was definitely true. We knew that. The story was real. The only question was, why hadn't Donald Trump attacked Russia in retaliation for the killing of U.S. soldiers? The White House has yet to authorize any step in response, the Times gravely noted. Suddenly it was clear who Donald Trump was really working for. We need to look at the real threat to U.S. troops and the risk that Russia was putting a bounty on their heads, no matter what memos may have been ignored. What is the truth of the matter here? Where do we have to focus? Uh, to, to say nothing of, of putting bounties on, on American troops. Um, it's unbelievable, Joy. Yeah. I mean, he has still yet to say anything as yeah. the president of the United States about bounties on American troops. Do we really have a president who, on his fourth year as the country's commander in chief, doesn't understand what intel is? It's all a theory. They're all leads until the explosions go off, until the bombs go off, until the attacks happen. I mean, this says something really, really scary about his fundamental lack of understanding about what the intelligence product is and does. How bad is it? Donald Trump doesn't even believe his own intelligence agencies. That's the lady who used to flack for Jeb Bush, and she was highly upset by this. That's really scary, she said. The Washington Post thought so. The Post fact checker gave the president four Pinocchios, and that's bad, for the crime of not believing blind quotes in the New York Times. The predictable rage avalanche followed. The Daily Beast declared it a scandal. And then Adam Schiff, ranking member on the House Intelligence Committee reminded this country that unnamed sources quoted in dishonest left-wing newspapers are the, quote, gold standard for what's true. He's inviting Putin to Washington uh, all, you know, while there is this um, credible allegation uh, of Russians putting a bounty on American heads. That, to me, uh, is just inexplicable. But this is not a hoax. Uh, and the fact that uh, the intelligence community is still looking for additional evidence doesn't make it a hoax. Americans reading this are outraged uh, about what Russia may be doing. The one person who isn't outraged is Donald Trump. It doesn't end up in the presidential daily brief uh, if it's a hoax. Uh, our intelligence community not only doesn't put hoaxes in his presidential daily brief, but rather it's the gold standard. So it doesn't wind up in the president's daily brief. It's a, it's a hoax, obviously. It's not like we invaded Iraq or anything. We wish we could tell you it was just Democrats who were getting hysterical, but it wasn't. Lying and neoconservatism are unfortunately bipartisan afflictions. Ben Sass, the sensitive, tough guy Republican who represents the state of Nebraska in the Senate, said that he wanted to see those dastardly Russian intelligence agents, quote, in body bags. Kill them! Kill them all! Liz Cheney of Wyoming, who by any measure is twice the man Ben Sass is, demanded to know what the president knew and when he knew it. What has been done in response to protect our forces and hold Putin accountable? Liz Cheney asked. The cable news shows turned it up to 11. The House Foreign Affairs Committee held hearings on it. The New York Times story didn't simply cause political problems for Donald Trump, though it did. It changed the foreign policy of the United States government. 
Here's professional windbag Seth Moulton, who somehow got elected to Congress from Massachusetts, telling you how important this is. But now we learn that he was making this deal at the same time as there were bounties on the heads of American troops, American sons and daughters. We clearly need more oversight over what the president is doing in Afghanistan. Seth Moulton speaks slowly because he thinks slowly. But he's clear on one thing. We need more oversight over Afghanistan. And the Congress soon got it. Just days after the New York Times story, both Democrats and Republicans on the House Armed Services Committee voted overwhelmingly to amend the annual defense budget. They did this to prevent the president, any president, from pulling troops out of Afghanistan. That's the one thing presidents aren't allowed to do. That amendment was sponsored by Jason Crow, he's a Democrat, and by Liz Cheney, who's a Republican. And it passed the committee by a vote of 45 to 11. It became law later in the year after the Senate overrode Donald Trump's veto. Seems to recall that's the only veto they overrode. So rarely has a news story had a swifter or more profound effect than this one did. And by now, of course, you have guessed the punchline. It was fake. The New York Times story was a lie. It was placed in the paper by neocons in order to subvert our democratic system, and it did, and once again imposed their will on the country. The public didn't want to stay in Afghanistan for 20 years. They did, and they got their way because they lied. The so-called intel community is now admitting this. They're admitting that the story wasn't true, and they're doing it for a very specific reason. Joe Biden has decided he now wants Af out of Afghanistan. But before we can withdraw the troops, we need new facts. You have to fix this story or you can't pull the troops out, and the CIA is happy to oblige. So none of it was real. They can say that now. But what we can't do is stop attacking Russia. So maybe Russia didn't actually put bounties on our troops, but Russia is still very bad. Russia, not China, is our chief enemy. And Adam Schiff helpfully reminded us of that yesterday. The intelligence community says that they only have low to moderate confidence that it's an accurate story. So it looks as though in this case, Trump might have had the right response, don't you think? Well, I don't think Trump had the right response in that he didn't uh, confront the Russians on this. He didn't even appear to take the issue very seriously. Um, you know, it's my sense that the intelligence community believes that the Russians did engage in this conduct, but they don't have the requisite level of confidence in that conclusion uh, to go forward with sanctions on that basis. <laughs> so Donald Trump didn't take the hoax seriously enough. And that's a sign of bad character. We don't know the Russians did anything wrong, but we must confront Russia over what we don't know they did anyway. So attack Russia every day. If you don't know why we're doing it, they'll know. That's our new position. The Biden administration just yesterday declared a national emergency for no obvious reason. Joe Biden announced that Russia has somehow taken malign actions against U.S. interests. Watch. Today, I've approved several steps, including the expulsion of several Russian officials as a consequence of their actions. I've also signed an executive order authorizing new measures, including sanctions to address specific harmful actions that Russia has taken against U.S. interests. I was clear with President Putin that we could have gone further, but I chose not to do so. To be, I chose to be proportionate. If Russia continues to interfere with our democracy, I'm prepared to take further actions to respond. Save that tape for the future when you want a reminder of just how insane things got in the year 2021. That wasn't posturing. That wasn't their bad. Those are actions against a sovereign nation, a foreign power, expelling their diplomats, destroying their economy, threatening to back their enemies in a war, a real war too, not a war of words, a war where people get killed. We're doing all those things. The question is, why are we doing them? That's the part that nobody ever explains, but they don't really need to because Vladimir Putin is so unbelievably, historically, monstrously evil, you don't need a justification to go to war against him. A man that bad should be punished just for existing with nuclear weapons if necessary. Here's Joe Biden explaining that Vladimir Putin has no soul. 
You said you know he doesn't have a soul. Well, I did say that to him, yes. And, to, and his response was, we understand one another. I wasn't being a wise guy. I was alone with him in his office. That's how it came about. It was when President Bush had said, I've looked in his eyes and saw a soul. I said, looked in your eyes, and I don't think you have a soul. And looked back at me and said, we understand each other. So you know Vladimir Putin. You think he's a killer? Mm-hmm. I do. And that's taking Corn Pop to a new level. You don't have a soul? You're a demon, a human gargoyle. This is a head of state who has like over a thousand nuclear weapons aimed at us. Why is our president talking about Russia this way? Well, it's obvious, clearly moving toward some kind of larger confrontation with Russia. Why are we doing that and what will it look like?